So guys, uh, if you remember, yesterday we were studying about an introduction to test engine and uh, we created an XML file within this uh, test engine. And uh, in that XML file, uh, whatever the content we have uh, identified in the report, we just place that content and in which we try to update this information, which is a classes. And even we updated this suit name. So here, this, is a suit tag which is a defining a suit and within a suit we can add a multiple test see this is a test and test may have an internal classes see in this test what i am doing means see existing i have only one test within this suit copy the content from test tag till the end of the test and paste it again see I have a copied it and I pasted the test again so within a suit we can add a multiple test see I pasted that line three times and for the second test which is in a line number 10 I am naming it as a sample test 2 and the third test which is in a line number 16 I am naming it as a sample test 3 so I have created a three different tests here and we have two three four new test two new test three new test four are the multiple classes so two three and a four so if you clearly observe this test ng suit contains three different tests test one test two and a test three let me highlight this one so that you people can easily understand that this is my first test and this is my second test and this is my third test and this is a suit starting and this is a suit ending so within a suit you have a three different tests are there so what I am going to do right now is let me run this suit and observe the report run as a test ng suit so whenever I am hitting it as a run as a test ng suit it's executing and let us see how this is going to work so it's executing the first test in a suit which is going to be this one and let us see so it's executing the info and it closed the browser again the next test another test got executed the second browser is launching so here i have a defined a three different tests here so my test ng test will launch three different browsers and it will execute all the tests see the third browser is launching and it is executing the third test once after all the scripts got executed I just want to refresh my reports okay I just want to refresh my project once to see the updated reports and right click on index.html open with the system editor so I have opened this one see here whenever I configured and see here three tests it got executed and these are the three different tests this is what your test name is we have a defined in an XML file and see here this much these many things it got executed and this much of time it took in executing the individual tests and the total time for the complete three tests is 45 seconds that's it okay this is the way how you can configure a suit within a suit you can add a multiple tests okay there is no specific restriction that you have to add these many tests only now what i'm doing means right click on this xml file copy it paste it again and now open the xml now here what i'm going to do right now i'm defining parallel is equal to test i'm defining a keyword which is parallel is equal to test and now let me run my test script as a test ng suit this time so the only thing which i did out over here is parallel equal to test what i felt means whenever i have a defined parallel equal to test i thought it's going to execute the test scripts in parallel but it is not launching again still it is executing in a traditional way which is one after another so here so parallel 
equal to true the first thing i'm defining here and then let me run my scripts expected attribute parallel associated with an element type equal to test okay it's looking for a test but though we have a given a test it's not launching the script in parallel okay so let us see here what kind of a configuration i have to do see suit name parallel equal to test that's the only thing i have to do okay that's what i have done already sample okay guys uh, if you observe the small thing what i have done i have to define parallel equal to test for the suit for not the test see i have a defined it in a line number four which i have a supposed to define it in this the line number two line number two is a tag name for our suit whereas line number four is a tag name for our test now let me try to run my test ng suit again and now whenever i am trying to run the suit see this time three browsers got launched at a time and it is trying to perform the operation on the three browsers at a time guys okay and it will execute the script on a three different browsers so with a simple keyword parallel equal to test our test scripts are executing in parallel within this test engine and if i observe that particular report see all the tests are executing parallelly and the time taken in order to finish this one is this much of time it took in order to finish the execution that's it so this is the way how to run your test scripts in parallel in test ng only thing is you just need to define parallel equal to test for the suit to tag in the xml file that's the only thing which you people need to update it here okay cool so am i clear for you guys how to configure this xml file in running the test scripts in parallel or do you have any questions for me on this am i clear for you all see the point out over here is so for suppose let me change it to boolean variable true okay so directly here itself my uh, eclipse editor itself is uh, throwing an error message by ignoring that error message when i run it as a test you know see the error message is clearly stating that you have to define for the suit the parallel shouldn't be like a true or false it should be like either a test or a classes so basically the ultimate objective with this keyword what's happening inside the parallel means testing g will see initially before the execution whether this keyword is there or not if it has that particular keyword then what it will do means how many tests see parallel equal to test i know i have a three defined tests uh, in my suit for suppose i have only two tests are there in my suit i don't have a three sets so what it will happen means whenever you have a defined this keyword at the time of execution your test ng will see whether this thing is there or not and then we'll see how many tests are there how many tests are there it will execute all the tests at a time see now in my situation i have only two tests when i run my test script all the two browsers are launching and it is executing the script on a two browsers so the bottom line here is is test ng will look into this tag followed by it will observe how many tests are there and it will try to launch all the tests at a time and it will see the execution status and it's going to update it in the report okay cool this is the thing so this is what it's going to do in a back end so it see the tags and how many things are there it will observe and then it will try to run the reports Thank <laughs> you. 
no you no need to write down any main method for jinit or test ng the only thing what we need to do for jinit and the test ng here is at the rate of test at the rate of test is the only thing which you people need to consider for this both the jinit and the test ng okay good enough done the deal okay sorry i missed your question yeah so the point out over here is it's not that uh, it's going to uh, put out over there it's your call out how many tests you want to execute depending on your need you know you may go with the 5 10 15 and all other stuff usually as for the standards you know at max you can go with a 5 or 6 okay it will support a bunch but uh, in the real world at max you can go with a five or six and moreover when this parallel execution comes in a picture means if your project has a bunch of test cases whatever you have uh, automated and it will take a huge amount of time in executing the stuff in such situations to save the execution time we will define the test and we will configure them in parallel so that it will save our execution time okay to save our execution time we are using this particular one that's the only thing okay good it's not going to uh, do the performance but you know you should have a, a limited amount of executions you know not going with a bunch of executions and one more thing is in my application uh, in my previous project when we scheduled a run you know the complete regression suit it will take eight to ten hours if we are running the scripts in parallel so we are running a three different sets in parallel and it will take about eight to ten hours to complete the execution if i am going to run only on a one browser or one execution in short it will take about a 12 to 15 hours to finish the complete execution so you know depending on a time and how much allocations and all those things you know you need to do those calculations and you need to keep those we need parallel runners at max we can go with a two to three and moreover uh, my previous project is a bit complicated one because of which uh, you know we took uh, that instance okay good enough done the deal and then once after you created this one the next point of which we need to consider out over here is in the test ng we can add a test annotations that's what we have seen here it has a test annotations so what i'm going to do right now means let me copy this first script and paste it here and now on this it has only one test right so what i'm doing right now means test one System not out dot print ln. Let it load print ln login. Okay, see here what I'm going to do right now. So, this method I'm changing it as a login, and now login. I'm changing the second test as a lockout. We know that for a single class, I can add a n number of tests. So I'm just doing that. Create, edit, and finally delete. So assume that this is your actual code and it has five different tests okay a java class has a five different tests now let me try to run my class run as a, a test ng test whenever it going to execute it if you see the console output basically see it executed create delete edit login and logout see whenever in a single test there are multiple or in a single class if there are a multiple test you know it's going to pick in an its own order and the output is going to be a different way but you know as far as i know 
if i log into an application then only i can create a user edit a user delete a user so login should execute first logout should execute at last not all these methods right so the point out over here is not only with the annotations we have to control the execution flow as well okay not only just defining the annotations you people should control how the execution is getting controlled so for that reason what we are going to do right now is we have it depends on option in test ng so i'm copying this syntax for the depends on and i am placing this create so what i am doing means this create method is depending on a login see here this create a test is depending on a login so once after login got executed then this create will be executed and the edit it's depending on a creates and the similar way the delete it's depending on edits and finally the logout it's depending on the deletes see here what we have done right now depends on a method so we are giving this a method name as an input what is the significance of these it depends on whenever your test script is executing test ng will see these depends on it will try to execute this one so earlier if you observe the order create got executed first now it will try to jump on to a create first and it has a depends on whereas the create is depending on a login right the create is completely depending on a login so from here the control switch to the login first it will execute the content in a login and then it will come on to the create and once the create got happened it will see what are all the things depend on a create and then it will execute the content which is depending on that like that you know you are going to set the dependency between the test see it's not the actual order which i want to execute i want to execute login first create next edit delete and log out with then without setting these depends on annotation test ng is picking its own order and it's executing its own way but now i'm i want to control my execution that's the reason i'm using a depends on a method with the which we are controlling the complete execution now when i run my test script as a test ng test if you observe the output now see here login create edit delete logout so it got executed in a proper order whatever you have a set so whenever you are dealing with a multiple test it's mandatory for us to create these depends on so that you know internally one method is depending on another so that one execution got completed then only the next one will be executed in a proper order and the test script will execute successfully okay and the test script will execute successfully okay good enough done the deal and it's not like a, a crud or some other operations but the only thing is setting up the relation between the different different methods you know without having any relation randomly it will execute it but what we are doing means we are setting some guidelines to our script stating that go in this order execute in this manner like that we are setting up some kind of a guidelines okay cool and for suppose assume that we have a prepared these many tests right we have a prepared these many tests for your uh, application assume that among all these tests okay among all these tests you are executing a regression suit on a stage build we need to run only five tests oh, sorry you need to run only two tests and remaining three you no need to execute but when i run my script all five will be executed among all the five i need to execute only Two as for my release, you know, if those two got executed, I can confirm that my release got successfully happened. So how can I execute only two means? Here we do have a, a another annotation here 
which is enabled okay we do have an another annotation that is an enabled usually this enabled we can directly add with a test tag automatically if enabled is a false automatically our test ng will skip that test from the execution see i am copying this test and i am pasting this test again yeah this is the one and uh, i'm deleting this stuff wherever the depends on is there i'm just deleting that uh, depends on so here uh, we do have this one now what i'm going to do right now is enabled equal to false i have a defined enabled equal to false so whichever the methods i don't want to execute i have a defined enabled equal to for false for all those methods and when i run my test ng test the test which don't have a enabled equal to false will be executed and whatever the test it has a enabled equal to false it will skip from the execution see here all the things got escaped only this method doesn't have enabled equal to false hence it got executed okay only this method doesn't have enabled equal to false hence it got executed that's it that's the another simple thing and then the next point here is assume that this is your new test earlier we created depends on a method right we used a depends on a method where in which we set the relation and here we can also use priority starting from zero zero priority means first execute it first priority means a second execute it two priority means third execute it like that it will go on okay so for our understanding purpose what i am doing means i am defining priority is equal to one and priority equal to zero priority equal to two priority equal to three and the four whatever the order you set it's going to execute in that priority itself see here in my script i set this login as a zero priority and if you observe login got executed first and logout as a priority one hence the logout executed second like that whatever the priority we set a test ng will pick that priority and it will queue the execution and it will continue the execution in that flow itself okay our test script execution will move on as per the priorities whatever we have a defined either you can go with a priority or you can go with the depends on a method of which we studied a few minutes before okay good enough done the deal these are the various small concepts whatever we have in a test ng and the major and the most important concept we have is a data provider few people will use this data provider and few people are not going to use this data provider so what exactly a test ng data provider is a data provider is a method annotated with at the rate a data provider in test ng usually returns of a data provider object with the multiple values the ultimate objective of this data provider is it will return multiple values what does it means assume that in your project you have a requirement with the limited sets of data in such situations you no need to configure your data in an external explicit file if my application is looking for a minimum sets of data i can define my data within the test ng data provider itself and i can use that piece of data how i can define that one so let me create a new test go to others directly i am choosing a test ng and name it new test h and here there is a data provider i'm checking that check box and click on a finish button so whenever you clicked on a finish button you know at the rate a data provider got added object is a return type for this method dp is a data provider name for suppose i'm changing this name to madhu dp okay this is a madhu's data provider copy it in this data provider we have a 
two sets of data one a two b so one surendra two jagannatham for suppose this is the data one integer this data provider is having a data which is a combination of an integer and a string okay integer and a string so whenever we choose the data provided at the time of a test script creation automatically test ng at the rate a test has a data provider we need to give the name as i have changed my data provider name i updated here and it is stating that integer n and a string s system dot out dot the print in integer is plus n system dot out dot the print ln string is plus s so we have a defined a both the integers and as well as the strings here and whenever i run my test and now see here in the test we have a two sets of a data as the object is having a two sets of data hence both the sets of a data got a return to the console for suppose if the data provider is having a 10 sets of a data then this output will return 10 sets of data and for a single class we can add n number of a data providers see here I can copy this one and I can paste another data provider another data provider but the only thing is we should give a unique name for all the data providers how many data providers are there we should give a unique name for all the data providers and make sure that we are calling the right data provider within the test so that the content present in a data provider will be executed by test engine so guys this data provider is one of the simplest concept for understanding guys the only thing is if you clearly observe the steps what we are doing at the time of creating a test Test ng test we selected data provider checkbox that's it so as soon as we selected a checkbox and click on a finish a new test got created for which at the rate a data provider got added and for this data provider it has an object as a return time it means it will store multiple sets of data into that in the example created by test ng it has two sets of data and one is an integer and another is a string and moreover test ng created a test annotation with data provider name if you change the name of the data provider then change the name inside the test for a single test we can have we may have n number of data providers and depending on the need we will call one data provider just by specifying its name okay just by specifying its name we will call that particular data provider that's it that's the straightforward thing what we have done and if you observe the documentation related to that we need to create a data provider annotation to which the entire desired data will be stored we can create n number of data providers to a specific test ng class so to identify uniquely give the name for each and every data provider so whatever the data provider is there you have to give a unique name for the individual data providers if you would like to run the script on a data provider in the test annotation specify the data or specify the data provider whatever you want to call that's it nothing more than that whatever the data provider you want to call just specify that particular data provider within that particular test that's it that's the steps what we have studied so far this is a brief overview about a data provider and usually a simple question will rise in our mind so far we studied about these many concepts in test ng where are we going to use those concepts right guys where exactly we are going to use those concepts we are going to use those concepts in a framework 
these are all the framework level concepts okay these are all the framework level concepts so how you need to use them how you need to call them inside the framework we will see whenever we are moving further with the framework stuff okay whenever we are studying about a framework then we will see more details about this one but so far this is a high level overview about the test ng and the various operations we can perform using this test ng am i clear for you or do you have any questions for me guys am i clear for you or do you have any questions for me on this so gnit test ng completed okay good so guys as you all know that your practice is the most important thing for this okay you have to do some practice for this and then only you can easily understand this concepts so please make sure that you people are spending certain amount of time in practicing this stuff okay 